Beyond Technical, Competitive Gaming. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another week of Beyond Technical. Today we're going to do something a little bit more advanced. So if you're a newer player, uh, it's good to know this and understand how it works, but I wouldn't necessarily work on incorporating it into your game until you've gotten a lot better. Trust me, I got really, really far without knowing very much frame data, if any. However, uh, when I went to the tournament, a couple tournaments lately, I was talking to a bunch of the pro players, and I was asking them all about frame data and their personal knowledge about it. And it was phenomenal how much information these guys had actually memorized. So I thought today we should cover a little bit more in-depth on frame data. Now again, in a previous video I've covered what frame data is if you want a very generic basic rundown. Today we're going to go over frame data and you. How is frame data beneficial to you, and how can you use this to improve your game in Street Fighter or any other fighting game? Once you understand frame data in one fighting game, it's going to make sense in all of them. So I've taken some fancy old notes here that I'll be referencing because I haven't actually memorized all the data for every character. It's really, really in-depth. But for your character, you should know basically some, some, some basic info, and we're just going to cover what that is today. So... First things first, frame data. What is it? So we've got our, our main points here that we're going to look over. You can, uh, by the way, if you want to know the frame data for your character, just type in like Balrog frame data into Google. A web Websites will come up. I won't specifically promote any of them, but there's a couple of big ones that have pretty much everyone's frame data and it's all correct. So go ahead and check those out. Maybe I'll post them on, on my site uh, eventually someday or something. But in the meantime, that's what you're getting. So that's where you go to find the frame data. Now, once you have the frame data, how do I read it? How do I understand it? And what's going on there? So the reason you're just staring at me sitting here with this microphone is because I'm going to show you uh, in a very real world sense what frame data is and then we're going to go into the game right after and we're going to check out how it all works there. So let's start with a, a bit a generic move. Crouching, light punch, and we're going to use Ryu and Balrog as our examples because I like to play Balrog and Ryu is going to be our, our prime example for all players to kind of base their game off of. So we use crouching, light punch. It's a very, very basic move, right? Crouch, light punch, nothing to it. So. Though the main thing you hear when people are talking about frame data is, oh, he has a three frame jab. The three frames stands for startup. So there's your startup frames, there's your active frames, and there's your recovery frames. And then it's how those three things affect your opponent. So first let's start with those. So startup, all right? So what is startup? So if you're sitting there and you're crouching down, you're in your little fighting stance, and you start to punch, you go, okay, here we go. One, two, three. All right, there you go. Those three frames, that's your startup. So there, now we've got our arm extended. That was the startup to the punch. Now, when the fist is fully extended and it's right here and it's locked, you hold that for two frames. One, two. Those are the two frames in the game where it's going to be active. That means it's now going to do damage to your opponent. Your recovery on Ryu's Light Punch is seven frames. So you're going to pull back and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and now you're able to block again. Now, that might sound like a really long time, like seven whole frames and three to start up and two to be active, but it's actually really, really fast, okay? So understanding how frames work means you can understand I punish things. So let's say that on block, so I punch you and you block it and it takes me 30 frames to recover. That means that you can use any 30 frame ability to punish what I just did. This is important to understand because it's going to explain what's, what's strong and what isn't in terms of when to use certain abilities. Now the other thing to keep in mind, again we're going to go a little more advanced today than usual, is um, your frames are also going to matter on distance. So let's say Ryu does his light punch, bam, but he knocks you like a full character away. Well, you might be able to punish with your three frame jab if I have six frames of recovery, but if your jab is too far away to land, it's still considered a safe move against that character because they don't have a punish option. So that's why this game gets super, super in depth. And there's a crazy amount of math going on for the, the pro players to figure out what works and what doesn't. So today we're just going to cover uh, some very basic moves and I'm going to teach you how to read frame data so that you can go and check out what you want to find out. So if somebody's doing something you don't remember, you're like, oh man, he just keeps heavy shoryukening. How do I stop this? You can go and figure it out. All right, so on that note, let's hop on over and I think one of these buttons should flip us. Oh no, it's all black. All right, we're in. So uh, I've got this all kind of primed and set up here. So what I, th I thought I'd talk about is a couple of basic abilities. Now, the startup, again, is, is that, that beginning of the punch. The active frames are the two frames that it's active for, and the recovery is how long it takes him to pull back. Now you see how when I did that in slow-mo, it happened very, very, very slowly, but when you jab on Ryu, it actually comes out really quickly. So let's use his medium punch as an example. The other thing to know is frame advantage on hit. Now the reason I didn't cover that with me is because I can't show you two people. So frame advantage on hit and on block. All right, these are two different numbers sometimes. So if I hit Balrog, Bam, he's going to have X amount of frames before he can do anything again, where he's in hit stun. If I hit him and he blocks, 
he's gonna have X amount of frames where he's block stunned. Now these moves actually have different properties depending on how, if you hit or if they block. So that's why blocking is very advantageous. It can get you out of a lot of situations because they can't necessarily continuously hit you. Plus there's the pushback factor. As you jab and hit, things like that, you see how I keep sliding further and further away from him but I haven't moved? That pushback is what keeps you safe in this game and stops somebody from just jab, 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 jab and holding you in the corner forever. Which is why this kind of like walk forward jab pressure can work really well against some newer characters because they don't necessarily know how to deal with it and ends up kind of frame trapping them. All right, so let's talk about hit rec or, uh, hit frames and uh, block frames, okay? So uh, for this one, we're going to just talk about hit frames. So how do you figure out if a move is going to combo with, it with itself or another ability? So crouching light punch, clearly I can do two of those in a row, two hit combo, good. But what about other stuff? So Reeves crouching medium punch, for example. It has a four frame startup. It has a four frame active. It has an eight frames or has eight frames of recovery, and it gives you a five frame advantage on hit which means eight plus five, that's how many frames it's gonna take them to recover. So the reason for that is because you recover an eight and they recover five slower than you, you actually have a four frame window or a five frame window if you're really, really precise to land something new. So Crouching Medium Punch, for example, has a four frame startup. So that's perfect, isn't it? They have, an, they have a five frame advantage on a four frame startup, which means they recover in five frames. You can swing, you have a five frame window basically to work with. So you can do anything that's gonna work in five frames. So. That means you can crouching medium punch once or crouching medium punch twice. There you go, two hit combo. But if we try to do something with a, a longer startup, say a crouching heavy kick, that has the full five frame startup. So he's gonna get his block off, all right? So to combo into different moves, you have to figure out where your advantages are. And again, these are very frame specific. So you can do medium punch, medium punch, and oh, look, I just miss, what's up with that? Uh, and that's where other stuff, I'm not going to go into this today because this is a, a frame data tutorial, but that's where stuff like plinking and double tapping comes into play because it gives you more frames to kind of land this ability on. So if you have a one frame window and it's really, really tight to land these links, you can use these, these kind of techniques. So let's talk about another ability, for example, Ryu's Crouching Heavy Kick. Now I mentioned in my Ryu tutorial for super beginners that this has a really long recovery, but how long exactly is it? Well, on block, I have 11 frames of recovery, all right? So let's do a quick switch. I'm gonna show you how to test out how you can punish these things. So again, Balrog is my primary character, but Ryu is a very good learning character. So I like to learn a lot of stuff on Ryu as well as, uh, as my Balrog. So the reason we're switching around is so that I can test something in Drain Mode because I want to be Balrog and I want to punish Ryu's sweep, okay? So this is where, this is the, the and you part, okay? How does this come in to help you? So I've been rambling and ranting and raving. You're probably going, oh yeah, that's great. I understand how frame data works now, but what is it for? How, why do I care? All right, we're gonna show you. So first we're gonna record. This means I have Ryu and I'm gonna record uh, a sweep every couple of seconds here uh, for the full 10 seconds. The reason I'm doing this is because it will give me plenty of windows to punish this sweep, okay? So now that he's just gonna spam sweep, we can do playback. Now, okay, before we go and actually start this, we've got 11 frames. That means you can look at Balrog and go down his sheet and anything that has less than 11 frames is gonna hit. Now, again, his jab, for example, is gonna be tough to land because see how far away I get pushed, all right? So that's not necessarily gonna work. But this is why you really need to understand frame data. Because you have 11 frames of recovery on block, that means if, if I block this, I can actually punish a sweep, a blocked sweep with a full ultra. He just took 500 damage for trying one sweep. That seems pretty int intense, doesn't it? Now, let's say that I'm further away because he goes for the max range sweep, all right? So, look at that, max range sweep into a dash punch, into cancel into a super, another 445 points of damage. So this one button is extremely dangerous because it has so much recovery. And that's on block. That's not even on whiff. If he whiffs it, I can punish right after at any point in time. So that whiff means that those 28 frames of recovery is how long it takes if you whiff. So if you whiff and you don't hit anything, you have 28 frames where I can hit you. If you hit me, you only have 11 frames to punish. So I can easily start up the slowest ultra in the world if you whiff a crouching, a crouching uh, heavy kick on Ryu and I'm not there to get hit by it. So the other move that I want to uh, quickly talk about because this is, and this one kind of goes into the beginner thing a little bit more. Uh, because it's super, super punishable. Sure you can. Sure you can. Dragon punch, uh, uppercut, whatever the hell you want to call these things. Sometimes I even call it a Hadouken. That's how bad I am at making these names up, all right? So, Ryu's going to do a couple of these. Now, let's, let's just look for a second how long that takes to come down. You know how long it takes for a heavy punch Shoryuken to recover? 
39 frames. You know what you can do in 39 frames? Pretty much anything. Like, it really doesn't matter. You can, you can punish with focus attacks. You can, like, every slow ability in the game can be punished with this. Look at that. You can punish a heavy punch through, can, especially if it's up close, with pretty much everything. So, keep that in mind, um, because you're going to want to not get pummeled by this stuff. Uh, so there you go. That's your basic frame knowledge. The reason Shuriken is so dangerous is because of its long recovery. That long recovery time gives you that opening to punish things. Now again, this is kind of advanced stuff, so I'm assuming almost everybody knows that already. Um, Shuriken startup time is uh, 3 frames for uh, reuse light, by the way, if you want to use it to, to punish things, which is why stuff like safe jumps comes into play. Safe jumps, uh, they're a little bit weird because you usually use abilities to time out the amount of frames you're going to use. I can kind of eyeball some of them. Once you played enough, you get to that point. Um, but it's always a risky ability. It's a risky thing to do because of uh, a wake-up option. So, for example, Ryu's uh, Light Punch Shuriken pretty much can shut down uh, Balrog's safe jump options if it's done at the right timing. Timing is super specific, though, so everything you do is going to have this tiny little window in this game, so it takes a lot of practice. For anybody who is new and watching this and is going, how the hell do I ever do these little three-frame punishes or these these one-frame links and all this stuff? It just comes with time. When I started playing this game, I honestly thought they were impossible. I used to flip out and be like, what the hell is going on here? Like, why? How does anybody ever land this stuff? How do the pros actually pull this off? And it's simply because they practice. Um, that's the end of today's episode on frame knowledge and frame data, and I hope that was good for you guys. I hope that weird cut doesn't uh, mess things up too much, but and I hope I got that audio fix. I apologize for that. I didn't realize it flipped to stereo on me. I have no idea why. This recording uh, equipment and software is the most ridiculous stuff I've ever worked with. It breaks constantly. So today we're doing a new recording setup. I hope it's uh, running pretty smooth. You guys can let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, it is bloody hot in here, so I think that that should be the end of the episode. Thanks for watching. Hope that uh, explains some frame data. And uh, I'm sure I said a bunch of stuff because when you ramble for over 10 minutes straight really quickly, you kind of get some things wrong. So go ahead and correct me in the comments. Uh, please sign up and follow, subscribe on YouTube for Beyond Technical. Or if you're seeing this on Beyond Technical, you can also check out the Cross Counter page. If you're seeing this on the Cross Counter page, you can also check out Beyond Technical. It's crosscounter.tv, Beyond Technical, uh, on Facebook, Twitter, all that fun stuff. There's links all in the description up below. And by all means, leave me your comments because I definitely go and read through them. So hope this helps you guys. I hope this is a little more in-depth tutorial than usual. And uh, next week, I think we might just go back to something a little more basic for the new people out there. So catch you next time. Thanks for watching Beyond Technical.